nutrition fact labels. So let's start with the serving info on the top. So your serving size is going to be listed right underneath the nutrition facts. So you can see that the servings here is going to be two thirds of a cup and that each container is supposed to have eight servings. Um, you want to check the total um, calories per serving, which is under number two. So right underneath that is the amount of calories per serving, and then the calories from fat is next to that. So you want to look at both of those numbers if you're trying to limit fats. Okay, number three, you want to limit these nutrients, which is going to be your saturated fats, trans fats, um, your cholesterol, and your sodium. Looking at those, you're trying to limit how much you're having in a day. Ideally, you wouldn't be eating foods with um, a high amount of saturated or trans fat. Um, sodium being salt, um, salt is added to almost everything. It's hard to find something that's low in sodium, but that's something to keep in mind that you do, um, you do want to try and avoid finding foods that are high in sodium for that reason. And then number four, um, you want to make sure that you're getting enough of these nutrients, which is going to be your dietary fiber. Um, so this example has 16% of your daily value and four grams overall, as well as protein. You're looking for higher protein levels. Um, this is what your muscles need to stay strong. So looking for higher protein and then your vitamins. So those are listed as well down here. Number five shows you a quick guide to the percentage values. Um, less, you should seek a lower percent of your daily value, and then more seeking a higher. So um, if you need less than 2,000 calories a day, um, you're going to be looking for a little bit less than the values they put for your total fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, sodium, total carbohydrates and dietary fibers towards the bottom here. But then um, if you need more, you're gonna be looking more towards this upper end with 2,500, or it could be even higher. It really is very individual. Okay, so more on labels. You're trying to limit saturated fats, added sugars, sodium, and these can help redu uh, reduce the risk of chronic diseases. Um, high levels of salts can lead to increased blood pressure. Too much sugar, it may be difficult to meet nutrients needed with your calorie requirements. Saturated fats and trans fats are linked to an increased risk of heart disease. So it's recommended that you consume no more than 10% of your daily calories from added sugars. So this is something that you should kind of keep in mind as you're looking at what you're eating so that you can avoid eating too many sugars. Okay, so label format. Um, this is a little bit older. They had transitioned in 2018, I believe, from um, the one on the left, that format for nutrition facts, to the one on the right, which just makes it a little bit easier to see the information. Okay, here is another example of nutrition facts. Um, so you can kind of look at these and see that the serving is one cup. Um, servings per container are about 14. Um, how many calories are in it? Cheerios has 100. Um, with a half cup of skim milk, it's at 140. Um, calories from fat is 15, which is pretty low. Um, saturated fats, there's zero. Trans fats, zero. Um, then cholesterol very low. Sodium, it's about 8%. With you adding milk, it's about 10%. But then your potassium, um, total carbs, dietary fiber, um, sugars, very limited added sugars, which is a good thing. And then protein, there's still some protein in Cheerios. And then below that, you can see that there are a lot of vitamins that are actually found in this meal. And one of the other things to look at, the first ingredient is whole grain oats. Um, on the apple, which these do not come with nutrition backs, but I thought it was a good example. So the serving size is one. 
calories is 65 um, calories from fat too. There's no total fat, no saturated, no trans fat, no cholesterol, almost no sodium. Um, it is a carb, so apples are a carbohydrate. Dietary fiber, it's three grams. Sugar, it's still 13 grams, but this is healthy sugars. It's not added sugar. And then there's no protein in it, but there are still vitamin A, calcium, vitamin C, and iron found in an apple. Okay, so these are some other examples. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out with the um, half and half is that um, corn syrup is one of the top ingredients. This is an added sugar. So if you look at sugars, there's two grams within your half and half that um, was added. Um, for yogurt, looking at it, there is 15 calories from fat, um, total fats, two, per two grams. Um, saturated fat, one gram, which is 5% of your uh, recommended daily value. Um, cholesterol, there's some sodium in there as well. Um, sugars is the big thing on the yogurt. There's 18 grams of sugar in the yogurt, but it does have um, six grams of protein. So you're going to have to kind of decide where you, um, what you want to eat and think about what your goal is. If it's to get your sugars down, you might want to look for a lighter sugar option. Um, if it's for protein, you might want to look for a high protein option. Okay, macronutrients. I don't know if you guys have heard this term before, but it sounds kind of um, overwhelming to me when I was first learning about nutrition. Macronutrients is just a fancy, say, uh, fancy way to say the types of food that we require in a large amount, which is what macro means. So these are used by the body on a regular basis to help with growth, repair, energy, and overall body function. There are three types that we are going to discuss, and these are the main three. It's going to be carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So your body is going to use all of these on a regular basis to um, perform functions needed for your body to keep going. So here are the recommendations below. Um, protein, so this might look a little confusing, but protein on average you want 0.6 to 1 gram per pound, which means that if you are 150 pounds, at the low end you want 90 grams of protein per day. At the high end you want 150 grams of protein a day. At 200 pounds, I showed these calculations as well. Carbohydrates, um, you want complex rather than simple carbohydrates. Simple carbs would be more of your white bread, whereas complex is going to be that um, whole grain option. So um, in a 2,000 calorie per day diet, um, about 225 to 325 grams per day should be carbohydrates. And then for 2,500 calorie per day, um, 281 to 406 grams per day is the recommended value. Fats. For a 2,000 calorie per day diet, they recommend fat um, intake to be between 44 and 78 grams. Um, this is not necessarily saying that you're having those saturated and trans fats. It's talking more these healthy fats and oils, nuts, avocado, salmon, more of those options. Okay, so question for you guys. I did mention this. What is the recommended percent of added sugar you should have in your diet? This is important because almost everyone goes over in added sugars. I know that I have more sugar added to my diet than I should as well. It is 10%. Okay, um, nutrition recommendations. These are very general. As I mentioned before, I can't make specific recommendations for um, specific populations, but in general, if you have chronic pain, fewer refined foods, fewer processed foods, um, fewer deep fried and less sugar is recommended. Um, and you should really focus on eating real food and not relying on supplements. These refined processed foods um, increase inflammation, which makes your body feel more 
pain in a way. I'm not saying that decreasing these will remove chronic pain from your life, but it might help to reduce that pain level over time. Pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, you want to avoid bladder irritants. These are gonna be your carbonated drinks, your caffeine, your acidic foods. Um, if you get enough fiber, um, the micronutrients and um, drink liquids gradually throughout the day, not too much before bed, it can really help with this bladder dysfunction. Wound healing. So um, if you have a wound that just doesn't seem to be closing, especially if it's a very large wound, the body might need more protein and that'll help with healing. Your body needs protein to repair. So I did mention basal metabolic rate before. Basal metabolic rate is the minimum number of calories you need to survive. So think of it as the amount of calories it would take to sleep in bed all day. So for women, there's a calculation right here. Um, so you're gonna take 655 plus, um, and then you're going to put your weight times at 9.6, um, 1.8 times your height in centimeters, and then 4.7 times your age. And if you do this calculation, um, filling these in first, where you're multiplying 9.6 times your weight, and then your height, and then your age, you add that all up, it should give you the number of calories you need at the minimum every day. So you can use that as a guide, and remember that that's the very minimum. So everything else you do, as soon as you sit up in bed, it's already taking more energy than that. Men, it's a little bit different calculation but that's listed below as well. Exercise and proper nutrition. Diet and exercise modulate the rate and function of functional decline with age and can be used to delay or postpone the onset of disability or dysfunction. So the ACSM recommends 150 minutes of moderate intensity per week. I will be talking about aerobic and resistance training in a separate lecture, so I'm just touching on them here, and we will go much more in depth in those, um, in those videos. But these are the recommendations for exercise, and if you balance exercise and diet, it can help, um, it can help to allow you to live longer and um, a healthier life more the way that you want to. Exercise and quality of life. So increased physical activity, which is what PA stands for, is a viable strategy to improve both health and quality of your life for older adults. Um, in a study by Tavers et al. in 2013, it showed that exercise can show cardiovascular and musculoskeletal benefits, as well as promote uh, increased cognitive performance um, self-effectiveness and motor control, leading to an improved functional capacity and a quality of life. Diet and quality of life. Optimal diets have been associated with lower risk of chronic diseases, especially coronary heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and some forms of cancer. Um, it can help to improve brain function, your ability to get around, and um, decrease the chances of those chronic diseases. So another question for you, what are some ways you can improve your own diet? Okay, that was the end of the first video, you guys. Thank you so much for listening, and I'm happy to hear from all of you if you do have specific questions for me.